Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so I'm a PhD student at the School of Interactive Arts and Technology at SFU. And today I'm going to talk about the influence of movement expertise on a point-to-origin task. More on that in a bit. So in the real world, we're constantly navigating where we are, updating where we are in space. We're trying to figure out our orientation in space and how to move around in that. What I want to look at is how do we do that in virtual environments? Two different reference frames are egocentric, which is self to object, which represents locations of objects relative to your own body, kind of like a first person point of view. And there's also allocentric perspectives, which is object to objects, where the locations of objects are defined relative to other objects. For spatial navigation, here are four proposed uh, strategies that we've come up with, as well as others, that people might do. On the top left, we have non-movers, that we've called them. And this happens when we go, we take a path, and we make a turn to the left or right, and then we ask participants, where did you start from? Can you point to that starting location? And what non-movers do is they seem to respond as if they did not update their movement. And they point from the origin to the end location. So it seems as if they didn't even go through the path, they kind of just watched or imagined themselves going through the path, but then didn't point correctly. On the top right, we have spinners. So these people actually go through the path, but then it's as if they've stopped and they've turned back to the origin and then pointed to it. The bottom right are non-turners, and those people are similar to spinners in that they go to the, through the path as if they travel the path, uh, but then they don't update their heading. So it's as if they kind of moved forwards and then shifted left their body, but not actually turned with the turn. And finally, turners on the bottom left, those are the ones that seem to update their heading correctly. So I can give a little demo of what this looks like. So if I'm starting here, and I walk forwards, and then turn from here and stop, and I ask, where is the origin? A turner would point that left. Whereas a non-turner would move forward like this, and they point that way. A spinner would go like this. They go to the end and then they spin around to say that's the starting point. And then the first one, the non-mover, is if they watch the path and then they point, there's the end point. It's like they don't really understand what was happening. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what are some individual factors that could account for this, these different strategies? Why doesn't everybody be a turner and turn as if they actually turned in the path? One that people have looked at is gender. So are females or males more likely to be turners or non-turners? Uh, what about 3D video game experience? So if you play a lot of 3D games, maybe you're more immersed in the environment and you'll be able to update your heading better. Uh, there's ethnicity, so different cultures have different ways of looking at the world. So traditionally, Eastern cultures are more allocentric, thinking about others, whereas the Westerns are typically seen as egocentric, thinking more about themselves. So does that translate into different navigational strategies? 
the response mode. So if I give a picture of like a top-down view that I showed earlier, or if I just ask uh, the written description like back left or front right, will there be some differences in that, the way that we think about space? There's navigation skills. So if you're really good at reading maps, or if you're a good or bad driver, does that translate into your navigational strategy? <laughs> There's cardinal direction proficiency. So if you're really good at knowing where north, south, east, west are, then maybe you're good at that too, in knowing where you are in space. And there's decision certainty. So if you're really sure that that's where the start is, does that correlate to how good you are at your strategy? Because maybe if you're not so sure, then it could be that you've messed up your heading along the way. One researcher found that gender, cardinal direction proficiency, and decision certainty did have an effect on this. As well as ethnicity and response mode also had some effects, but not navigation skills nor 3D gaming experience, surprisingly. So what about movement expertise? I was thinking that if dancers or people like LMAs who think differently about space, they're constantly thinking about where they are in relation to others, about where they are in space, are they going to be turners or non-turners? Are they going to know where they are better in the virtual space as well as where they are in the real world? In egocentric spatial movement and body orientation, the posterior parietal cortex is thought to give body awareness for spatial positioning. And this is important for dancers' bodily control and orientation. Navigating space during leaps and turns requires sharp spatial awareness. On the other hand, the unique self-motion abilities in professional gymnasts is linked to superior interpretation of autoless signals, which is the linear leftward, rightward motions, when no change in canal signals is present. <coughs> so I have some competing views, one with dancers and one with gymnasts, both deal with movement quite a lot. But which one is are my LMAs going to use? I looked at 15 first-year dance students here at the SFU School of Contemporary Arts, where they've done more than 10 years of dance. They go through quite a rigorous process of being admitted to the school, so they have done quite a lot of dance. 16 researchers at our Moving Stories residency who have less than five years movement experience. They've done maybe some yoga or taken a dance class or two, but nothing too rigorous. and as well, eight lab and movement alumnus. This is the environment that they were given. So I'll show you a quick trial. So at the end of that, you're asked to point to where the starting location is as if you traveled that virtual path. What I found was that overall, people used a ton of different strategies. And in the blue, that's the first year dance students. The green is the less than five years, anything yoga, dance. And then the red is the lab and movement analysis. And we found that there was a medium association between type of strategy and level of movement experience. Looking closer, here's the first year dance, where they were split between non-turners and no preference. The greater than five years experience, or less than, sorry, uh, they were split across all three strategies. 
And the LMAs were primarily Turner, so they updated their heading. Looking across strategy over time, you can see that on the far left, the lab and movement analysts were very high in their strategy. So there was four trials of that virtual space path. Whereas the other two, especially the middle one, was all over the place. But looking at this one, you can see that the first year dance students kind of converged over time. I'll just skip over this. Our takeaway is that the LMAs were likely turners and updated their headings, where first year dance students were not. They seem to not be able to have a consistent strategy over time yet. We want to look at why that is. Why are the dancers different from the LMAs? And what are some other demographics we can look at? Thank you.